Hello friends, welcome to YouTube channel Electronics for You. In this video, I will explain transient response of first order system. So friend, before this video, I have uh, explained a steady state response in details. In steady state response, generally we calculate positional error constant, velocity error constant and acceleration error constant along with the steady state error that is our ESS. So, uh, the time response is divided into two parts. One is transient response and steady state response. Uh, I have already explained steady state re uh, response as I have told you. The steady state response actually depends on the type of system. In this uh, steady state response, the uh, steady state error ESS depends on the type of system. The type of system is nothing but the number of poles at origin. And our transient response, it depends on the order of the system and order of the system means highest power of S in the denominator but for a closed loop system. And here we generally consider an open loop system. So generally the transient response is, is dependent on the order of the system which is the highest power of S in the denominator of a closed loop system. Let us assume that one first order system it has equation like this this is a transfer function c of s upon r of s which is equals to k divided by t s plus 1 here the k is nothing but a dc gain and t is our time constant of the system here time constant is the measure of how quickly first order system responds to unit step response and DC gain is nothing but the ratio between input signal and steady state value of output that is in uh, it is the ratio of input and output okay so it is a DC gain now let us consider example so uh, a first order system if it is having equation like this then this 4 is actually a DC gain and phi u is our time constant in seconds. Now consider another system where g of s is 10 divided by s plus 1. Now note here that we have to explain the system in the form of ts plus 1 form where the given system is in this form therefore divide this numerator as well as denominator by phi u because we have to make it as 1 and after solving this we will get g of s equals to 2 upon 1 by phi u s plus 1 here 2 is will be again our dc gain and our time constant will be 1 upon phi u for this equation so in this way we can calculate this thing and uh, now let us uh, consider an RC circuit for the analysis of first order system. The RC circuit is here and VI of T is our input signal, VO of T is our output whereas R and C are our registers and capacitors in the system. This is a series RC circuit and we will analyze this as a first order system. Now let us apply KVL at the input side. This is our input side and if we apply KVL here, note that uh, KVL is nothing but the EMF is equals to potential difference and here EMF is VI of T and therefore I can write here VI of T is equal to the current is flowing through this resistance therefore I will write I R into I of T that is register multiplied by current and the potential drop across capacitor actually it is given by 1 upon C integration of I T I of T DD. So this is the potential drop across a capacitor and if you want to find the transfer function for the first order system means for this RC circuit then we have to 
take the Laplace transform for this and after taking Laplace transform vi of t will be converted into vi of s and i of t is definitely i of s in both cases and for Laplace transform of integration it is 1 upon s i of s and therefore we will get equation like this now this is our equation number 1 now let us apply kvl at the output side <laughs> this is our output side and the output is vo of t here i can write vo of t equals to at output side only one capacitor is there and therefore again same equation will be here this this equation the part of this input equation is 1 upon c integration of i of t dt because this is the potential drop across the capacitor here and uh, again we, if you want to find the output then apply laplace transform and therefore we will get v o of s equals to 1 upon c s into i of s this is equation number 2 now the transfer function is laplace transform of output upon laplace transform of input it means that equation number 2 should be divided by equation number 1 and if we take this i of s will be common here and we will get r plus c 1 upon c s in denominator and therefore our output will look like this i of s and i of s will get cancelled and after solving this taking common denominator here this r into c s plus 1 will be the in numerator here for the uh, for this denominator and c s c s will get cancelled and therefore our equation will be the transfer function v o of s upon v i of s equal to 1 over r c s plus 1 so this is our transfer function for this system now note here that we got equation like this and denominator is having s here and the power of s is definitely 1 as the power of s is 1 this is our first order system because it has one pole at the origin and if you want to calculate the pole where the pole lies then we have to equate this equation that is r c s plus 1 equal to 0 and therefore s equal to minus 1 upon r c is the pole at uh, here the pole at this uh, in this equation so note here that our output actually uh, consisting of a time constant this is rc is nothing but a time constant because our equation is in the form of k over ts plus 1 here rc is nothing but a time constant in this case so uh, if you want to solve this equation further you can solve but uh, look look here that <coughs> again consider the first order system and let us apply an impulse response here impulse response is having uh, its signal like this and it has amplitude 1 therefore here i can write r of s that is input is equals to del of s equals to 1 okay so it it is having uh, its amplitude as 1 and uh, therefore if you want to calculate c of s then c of s will be that is output will be equal to transfer function multiplied by input how 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 we will get it so it's by the formula of transfer function that is output upon input laplace transform of output divided by input so your output will be multiplication of these two and therefore in this case we will get if uh, this is our function g of s then uh, sorry uh, this is our output c of s will be multiplication of these two and to find c of t that is the output in the form of t we have to take inverse laplace of this and further we have to uh, rearrange equation here we have to rearrange this equation in the form of s plus form so after rearranging this and taking inverse laplace form we will get l inverse equal to c of t equal to k by t e raised to power minus t by t so this is this this is the formula that we can apply and we will get c of t is equal to this one now note again <coughs> this is k our dc gain and t is our time 
period in this case so time constant by uh, putting some value of k and t we can plot the equation like this t uh, here time t is on x axis and c of t this is c of t on the y axis put some value of k here and some value of t and try to plot the graph you will get characteristics like this it is nothing but an exponential function so first impulse response we will get output like this and now let us apply step input to this system again the amplitude of uh, step response is considered as 1 and uh, r of s for step in uh, response the input function uh, the equation will be 1 by s here and now we have to put this value here in our equation so uh, c of s will be multiplication of this function and this function that is equal to k divided by s into ts plus 1 now to find out again c of t we have to we have to take inverse laplace form and to take inverse laplace we have to separate this equation then take partial fraction method use partial fraction method to find out the output here so what we will do we will separate and exp uh, here equation will look like this okay it is a by s plus b by st plus 1 now by applying Laplace uh, partial fraction we can get output like this here b is equals to minus t and a equals to 1 just put the values and we will get further equation like this this t and t will get cancelled and further you can apply inverse laplace transform here i will not explain this process because it's a part of mathematics now after applying inverse laplace we will get equation like this here u of t is equals to 1 therefore in uh, short we can say that we got the equation c of t is equals to k times 1 minus e raised to power minus t by t so this is our equation for the step response or you can say that for unit step response we will get output like this in this case we can consider uh, t is equals to t and we will get equation like this but now let us consider this example and we will again plot graph here and if we put some value of k and t in this case it is k equals to 10 and t equals to 1.5 seconds then we will get response like this you can check it by putting value of k and t in this case we'll get response like this this is one example here you can see here uh, see that the response is getting stable after some time and it is reaching to output similarly if we take a t is equals to some t then we will get output like this this is t at t is equals to this time period we will get 63.2 percent of the output then at 2t we will get 86.5 percent output and at 5t we will get 99.3 percent means after that we are getting near output that we can say that at 5t the output will be exactly same as that of expected output the actual output will be exactly same as that of expected output after 5t that is after 5 con time constant we will get the final output if we take different t's different values for t for example 1 3 5 7 we will get output like this assuming that k is equals to 10 k is equals to constant here we will get output like this you can clearly observe that less the value of t you will get output faster here the response that is expected output is 10 and it is reaching to 10 faster when t is less and as t is greater the response will be slower by changing the value of k we will get output like this keeping t is equals to 1 we are getting this okay so uh, k is nothing but the amplitude in this case that is the c of t now let us see the relationship between step and impulse response in this case c of t is equals to this one 
okay now uh, we can multiply here and further differentiate this equation after differentiating this equation we will get dc of t by dt is equal to k by t e raised to power minus t by t so it was the step response and it is it is nothing but the impulse response as we have already seen now you can say that if we differentiate a step response we will get impulse as output or we can say that if we integrate the impulse response we will get step response as our output same is possible in the case of ramp signal and parabolic signals also so this is the relationship between step and impulse response in case of a first order system here note that in both cases the output this is our equation and this output is not depending on the value of input input may be anything and this will remain as it is means that it will it, it depends only on t and dc gain k so uh, if you want to calculate the ramp response this is our r of s r of s is equals to 1 by s square in case of a ramp signal now putting this value in uh, c of s equation c of s will be this multiplied by r of s so k by t s plus 1 multiplied by 1 upon s square this is our equation again we will up, uh, find, uh, apply trans uh, partial fraction method and then we will find the inverse laplace transform to get the value of c of t which is nothing but this one in this case ramp for ramp signal c of t is equal to this one and if uh, same is possible in the case of parabolic signal if r of s is equal to 1 by s cube parabolic means it has input 1 by s cube it's for the unit parabolic signal again this function will be multiplied by 1 by s cube and c of s is equal to this one again apply partial fraction and uh, after applying inverse laplace transform we will get value of c of t like this this is the parabolic response for the first order system i will keep it up to you to find the next output so in next uh, uh, video i will explain some problems related with the first order system that is examples on the first order system keep watching thank you